In today's tutorial, we're going to be designing a cereal box logo uh, similar to the one in the Lucky Charms. So you'll notice the Lucky Charms is sort of curved along a path. It also has an outline along it, and behind the outline there's a shadow. Uh, the text itself, the lettering, the inside fill has a gradient, and a gradient is when you have a transition from one color to another, or from one shade to another. In this case, we have yellow that sort of darkens as it goes down. It gives it a three-dimensional effect. So there's actually two drop shadows, one behind the whole thing and then one between the yellow text and the red outline. So we're going to look, take a look at a couple simple methods for accomplishing that. To begin with, we're going to create a new print document in Adobe Illustrator. And when this comes up, we're going to ask to use inches as a measuring tool. And we're going to say, let's go with 10 by 6. We're going to use CMYK and 300 DPI. And the first thing we're going to have to do is use the pen tool right here to create a curve. So as I click and drag, I create a handle that allows me to create a curve. Oops, too far. So as I use the hand tool, spacebar, I can move that over again. And if I use the tab key, I make all my toolboxes and panels disappear, and that's kind of a handy thing. So I want to be able to see my workspace better, so I'm going to use that. So I'm using the white arrow tool or the uh, sub-selection tool, direct selection, to make a curve. And I'm going to get the regular selection tool and copy this. So Alt, Shift, Down, dragging it down, is going to drag it straight down. Next, by selecting one at a time, I'm going to make text on the path. So I don't even have to select the text on the path tool, which is in here. I'm going to use type tool. I'm going to click on my path. and I'm going to write the word Baylor. Because we're the bailers. And if I select all that, I'm going to now choose to make my text bigger. And using the type menu in the font section, I'm going to choose uh, one of my favorite fonts. I want something that looks kind of cereal boxy. And when we look at text, we're looking at the difference between serif and sans serif. So if we go back to the Lucky Charms logo, you'll see there's a lack of any curly cues or dots on the edge, and that's a sans serif font. So going back into our choices, again, we might choose a sans serif font like the Gill Sans Ultra Bold, and that looks okay. I also might want to make the first letter bigger, so let's take that one and make it larger. Okay, so now I'm going to take this next path and I'm going to add bytes or crunch or something like that. Capital C. And there we go. Now you'll notice that there's some lines on here. This is the start line, the end line, and the mid line. I can actually drag this line backwards. Theoretically, and I can also use my paragraph centering to change that as well. So there's a few ways you can adjust your text. You can always tilt it. You can rotate it. You can do lots of things. I want to put these close together because I'm going to be working with effects that bring them close into each other's area. So Baylor Crunch is the name of my serial. And what I want to be able to do, let me take this letter make it bigger, just the C. And I'm clicking the little arrow tool. And I hope that my first letters are the same size. This one is 90. Let's make it 100. There we go. And we'll make this one also 100. So I can just type that in. And there we go. So before they overlap too much, I want to bring them sort of slightly separate, but not too much. And what I'll do next is I'm going to uh, select this. And now that I've got the letters the way I want them to be, I want them to be treated as shapes, not as letters. So I'm going to take type and create outlines. Now the reason I want to change them to shapes is I want to be able to affect them the way that I can affect shapes. That is, I want to change the outline stroke and the fill and I want to be able to apply a gradient to them. So I'm also going to make copies. So using my layers panel here I want to see what I'm working with here. So if I open up this layer 
there's a layer where that text is. I'm going to take these and I'm going to make a copy. So I'm going to choose Edit, Copy, and then Edit, and Paste and Back. I want to use my Layers panel to lock the pieces I'm not going to work with right now because I want to take these pieces and I want to apply a red outline. And I'm going to give it a nice thick stroke. Now by doing this, it makes it look like there's a thick line around the outside or it's even a shadow or a, a separate piece behind it. So what I can then do is uh, choose the stroke section and I can choose to put this align the stroke to the outside which makes it bigger, align the stroke to the inside which makes it smaller and invisible or I can align it, align it to center. I'm going to choose outside because that's really what I'm concerned about doing. So I'm going to make that outline there and now I'm also going to lock that section and unlock the front copy and choose this and I'm going to choose a nice yellow shade. Red and yellow are common food advertising colors. Think about your McDonald's logos and Burger King and Taco Bell and what we'll do next is we're going to take this and take our back copy and apply a shadow to it by copying it as well. So edit, copy, and then edit, paste, and back. So this edited and back paste color, I'm going to take that and I'm going to apply a black stroke to it and make it a bit thicker. And I can now move that entire piece left and down. Now if we go back to our sample copy here, we can see that the drop shadow is sort of dropped behind. There's also one behind this lettering here. So going back to this, I'm going to choose my yellow lettering on top. And I'm going to edit, copy, and then I'm going to edit and paste it back. So now I've got an extra copy, which I'm only concerned, not so concerned about the fill, I'm concerned about the stroke. So I'm going to give it a stroke on the outside of black. I'm going to crank that size up. Okay, and I really want to make this sort of dimensional, so if I off shift that, I'm just using my arrow keys here. Now it's got sort of a three-dimensional appearance to it. So if I also take that, by the way, I can also apply some opacity to it. So if I just dim that out slightly, too much. Let's bring that up to about 85% using the opacity slider in the options bar. Uh, it still looks kind of browny, so I'm going to take, take that further up until I like what I see. So now I've got a nice three-dimensional looking logo and my last phase, which I'll do in the next video, will be to apply a gradient to it.